what what do you think was like in history from your research what do you think was like the first example of lenr or touching on that on that uh, phenomenon I think, it, I, I think it was the first sun in the universe <laughs> besides nature i'm talking about our cognitive grasp of it like our, our awareness I, I, I think pro i think probably the first people um so uh, are we talking pre-ice age or post-ice age oh we, well i don't we don't know much about prehistory so yeah let's go <laughs> let's, but the prehistory I, I, thing I, I, that's I, a I, that's a whole nother can of worms we won't go down that rabbit hole but just in general <laughs> I, I think probably the the first example of uh, uh, Lena was with um, alchemy. Okay, so um, do you have a reference, like time frame wise, or any certain culture? Well, I don't know. Some people say it's thousands of years old. Some people say it's five thousand years old. So you're saying like Egyptian, uh -huh. uh, like Baghdad battery, that type of stuff, like still kind of prehistory. What about like in modern um, our modern grasp of of history? Like, what would you? Well, I, th I think the first biological transmutations, if you look at Jean-Paul Bavarian's book, uh, all, fu uh, all uh, fusion in all its forms, or, or I think he, I think in there he cites uh, references from uh, 1790, excuse me, 1798. Okay. Uh, I think the first person to probably uh, uh, realize that he had, or was at the time, but po maybe post it, he realized. Uh, was Tesla, uh, and that was when he was demonstrating his carbon button lamp. I think it was in, I don't know, 1891, 92, something like that. It was in, in the, the late 18, uh, 1800s. Yeah. Uh, and he did it in America, and he came to the, I think, the Royal Society and presented there as well. Um, he, that, that, because it was carbon, silicon carbide, or whatever, I, I think he would have seen a spread of elements being synthesized. Uh, and uh, he was also uh, synthesizing rentogen rays, which later we call x-rays right. probably in the west they call them rentogen labs here in in the east of europe <laughs> yeah more um, it's traditional it's more part of the roots right <laughs> yeah but uh x-rays and and uh, i think if you go to i think it is in uh, serbia if you go to the museum in there that they have some examples of of exposures that he did I'd go, oh look i can see my bones yeah um, <laughs> yeah um, <laughs> so you know, I, I, given the fact that he was seeing those x-rays and that, the, the, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, I, I think probably uh, Tesla was first. And I, I recently did a, 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 a blog and a video uh, based on um, uh, Tesla's, I think, 1932, like one of, one of the latter. Oh, yeah. uh, Last uh, things he said. Yeah, yeah. He, he said something about that he was... Uh, to doing radiation uh, uh, like changing the radioactive uh, um, rate of decay um, and he talked about this and published it in yeah sort of, I, 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 I read eight, that eight, article 93 to 6 or 7 something like that around the time that electrons were, were being discovered um, he was actually publishing articles around this so I think without a shadow of, of a doubt it would have been him uh, when it comes to uh, loading hydrogen uh, into uh, metal, uh, it was um, a guy called Thomas Graham, MRS, yeah. uh, and he was the first uh, head of the Royal Society, and he found uh, uh, in the... Uh, 1930s? No, 18, 1870s, I think Oh, wow, was. wow. Yeah, uh, even before, well, long before deuterium and, and neutrons were uh, discovered, that he, the maximum amount you could load any me element with hydrogen was, um, deuter sorry, hydrogen into uh, palladium. Yeah. And, uh, and, and basically, that's the level we actually seem to be able to load it even today at the best, best levels. And he said the only way you can really load it is to, is to, um, uh, uh, make, make sure you have no nitrides or oxides on there. For those people that don't know, typically in cold fusion or, uh, or low energy nuclear reactions or condensed matter nuclear science experiments, one of the ways to do this is you take a, a, a transition metal typically that is able to load hydrogen. You load as much hydrogen in there as possible. And in the case of uh, titanium, you know, you're more flexible. In the case of palladium, you really want to load deuterium. It seems to work with deuterium better. Um, but uh, uh, that, that's essentially what I'm talking about.